Um, I'm going to choose a square dimension and let's use 512. You can really do whatever you want. It depends on what size you want your block to be and what you're going to be working with. Let's just do this for now. Um, 512. Right, so we need to essentially create a texture for each of our sides of the cube and the top and the bottom. So let's go ahead and create the classic grassy side. I've chosen um, ahead of time some colors for the brown. You can copy these down if you like. You can really use any color as long as it looks sort of like dirt. So this is my darker brown and my lighter brown, A47, B47. Um, let's go ahead and switch to the gradient tool and drag down. Make sure, oops, sorry, make sure your uh, foreground color is the darker one. Um, let's do this again. Okay, so you want to make sure that you have a really nice blend, not too dark at the top. This will become clear in a second. Um, we're going to go to filter gallery and to stained glass. These are the settings I've used. You can change the light intensity. It's only going to kind of create a more intense light in the middle. Um, you want to make sure though, whatever you're doing is that there are definitions in the shapes around all the edges. Down at the bottom it won't be a problem, um, but at the top you want to make sure that you can see each individual bit of stained glass up there. If it's too dark and it melds together, uh, your pixels will be blended together. There are too many dark pixels up there. Um, so let's go ahead and apply this. Now we're going to pixelate with a mosaic and you can really um, choose whichever size you like. Uh, this is more or less making sure that we have um, a good rounded off number and that our squares fit inside. You can see that my right side is slightly small. It's not a perfect square. The bottom is also the same way. So we can increase this and you'll notice that the border increases on those two sides. Um, 41, it looks too much. 39 maybe. 37. 37 looks pretty good. Let's go with that. Alright, so now we have a piece of dirt. Um, we're going to create the grass up top. So let's zoom in. I usually like to stick with making this uh, into quarters. So you see we have 3, 6, 9, 12, 14, 15. It's roughly the same size. And we'll, we'll drop down a couple blocks and you'll see what I'm talking about soon. Um, so let's go ahead and select these first three here. Drag across and make this nice and even. Okay, so we're going to make a mask for this part of the layer and we will do a hue and saturation mask. Now you can kind of adjust this to whichever color you'd like obviously, but to match the Minecrafty green color it's slightly yellow, kind of like this. We'll turn up our saturation just to get a better distribution between the light and the dark pixels. Um, 45. That looks pretty good. Let's go with this. Um, so in order to get a kind of realistic looking piece of grass, what we're going to do is grab our brush tool and make sure you're on the pencil. And I've gone ahead and switched over to square brushes, like here. Um, and just make sure it's the same size as your blocks that you chose earlier. So I chose 37, make sure this is 37 also. Um, and at this point you'll notice that we're editing a mask so our background and foreground colors are white and black. Um, if you want to add or subtract from the mask, um, you'll notice that we can just do this to plop in a little green square or we can plop out the green ones and put in some brown. Um, I'm going to just do this in a couple random spots to make it look more like the classic green grass blocks. Um, let's just do one of these here. And just know that this is kind of totally manual. It doesn't snap or anything like that, so you have to kind of clean up these little edges. Um, and you don't, of course, have to do that, but I'm kind of 
anal about that. Uh, let's switch over green. Put a couple more of these down. It's nice to get a distribution of different color also. So if you can find so like the darker ones will be a darker green, and the lighter blocks like this will be a very nice light green. Um, so let's go ahead and yeah, you'll notice that this I didn't really quite get it, so it's probably one or two pixels over. Um, these here, here. Let's zoom out and take a look at that. It's not bad. Um, I'll clean up this edge a little bit here. And this one. Great. And this too. That's a little much. Okay. Um, so, this is what we're going to use. Now, I'm on Windows, um, so go ahead and control click the hue saturation saturation layer um, and I'm going to create a mask for that with levels and I'm just going to take our our high and midpoints up and down a little bit just to get a better distribution of contrast here let's try this cool so this just brings kind of a nice bright feeling to it um, there's one of our panels great so I'm going to create a group now. Let's rename this to side. And I'm going to stick all of these into the side group. And at this time, I would suggest duplicating this group and just name it other sides. Right. OK. Um, we still need to do the top and the bottom. So I'm going to copy layer one out of here because this is already a perfectly good, perfectly good looking um, brown piece of dirt. So let's go ahead and copy this, make a new layer. Um, we'll go back up to our layer here, paste. And um, I'm going to just call this bottom, drag it down here. Um, let's also copy this again, make a new layer. This is going to be our top, like the green grass top. Um, and all I'm going to do simply for this is uh, apply another hue saturation with the same that we used here. So 62 and 45 to these colors. Let's just do that real quick. 62, 45, we got a nice bright green, looks very pretty. Uh, let's create a new group, call it top, and stick these two in the top folder. All right, great. So I've got my top, my sides, oops, let's drag this up to the actual top, there we go. Um, top, bottom, and other sides. So what we need to do now is dig into 3D. So we're going to create a 3D shape. Um, before you do any of this 3D work, make sure you convert these all into smart objects. Let's go ahead and... Oops. I'm not quite sure why this happens, um, but if you are not looking at the layer and you create a smart object, it just kind of turns it blank for some reason. Um, but if you are looking at it and have it selected and then create the, the smart object, it works. Could be a bug, I'm not really 100% sure. Okay, great. So we have all of our smart objects. Um, what I'm going to do now is take the first side, let's take a look at this, make it a little bigger. Um, we're going to switch over to 3D mode. And what I'm going to do with this side selected, I'm going to go to the 3D tab. And I'd like a mesh from the preset, and I'm going to choose cube, and then hit create. 
So you'll notice that we go right into 3D mode. Um, these panels are all really useful. I'd suggest keeping them open, um, just for beginners anyway. So we can take a look. I have my move tool selected right now. And if you have the move tool selected, you'll notice um, the cursor has this little rotating guy. Um, this essentially means rotate the 3D object, roll, drag, slide, and scale. Um, this is in context with whatever is selected down here in 3D mode. So this is my current view. This is essentially just the camera looking at this object. Um, if I select the actual cube, you'll notice that rotating the cube around doesn't rotate the workspace, but the cube itself. So make sure that whatever you're doing, um, 